It's Sway in the morning. Only on Shade 45. No, it doesn't. It means you have to be old to be a legend. They, 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 no, not at all, man. We got, <laughs> we got, you know, Gary Coleman was a legend, right? You That's know. true. Yeah, he was never old. That's you know, true. I'm taller though. You tall, you're taller, but you know, you guys got the same moxie. Oh, the same spot, the same spunk. Oh. Joel Schumacher is in here with us, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, I like spunk. Um, hi, I'm Sway. Good to meet you, man. Hey, Sway. Good, Good to see, see you. you. Um, your voice sounds better when these put these earphones. On. It does it. I, I think yeah. I, I'm real nasal. I'm a little sick. You know, it's I don't okay. want to. I don't want to get too close to you, too. I hope you don't mind. No, that's no. okay. I'm a little sick in my brain. You're so just... <laughs> I hope. I hope that's not as catchy as what you have. No, so. no, 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 no. Well, you know, actually, that that sickness in your brain has helped you to accomplish a, <laughs> a lot of great things. I mean, uh, I'm a fan of so many, uh, uh, so much of your work that you've directed uh, uh, from Saint Elmo's Fire. I go back that deep. Uh, to the Lost Boys, we, when, <laughs> you know, <laughs> with, with Kiefer and Sutherland, and and you know, you work with so many greats, you know. And now I you, did. yeah, you know. Let me ask you. I mean, working with Rob Lowe and uh, Demi Moore, at the time, you catch a lot of uh, big actors when they weren't so big. Well, that's because the big actors weren't looking to work with me. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, Meryl Streep and Robert Redford weren't sitting around going, uh, "Should we work with?" Um, <clears throat> Excuse me, Sidney Pollack or Joel Schumacher. Yeah, and, <laughs> and so, um, yeah, and I still work with unknowns. I really, you know, the first movie I wrote was Sparkle, and oh my god, and that man. was my first screenplay. What? And all those kids, most of them, it was their first movie. Wow. And we found Lynette McKee. She just came in an open audition. Really? And sat down and sang, yeah. Irene Cara was in that too, right? Irene Cara, Philip Michael Thomas, Dorian Harwood. Mm hmm. The great Mary Alice, you know, I mean, we had a lot of great people in there. That was a, as a child, I remember my mother used to show us that to put us to sleep, sparkle. <laughs> and we all dreamt of being on stage one day. And, and Irene Cara went on to do Fame, right? Yeah. Yep. And uh, yeah. Philip Michael Thomas did Miami Vice. Yes, got rich. And yeah. Dor Dorian did a great deal of work. Uh, and Dorian should still be working. He's a fabulous actor. Yeah. And, um, you know, then I wrote Car Wash. A lot of people don't know that you wrote Car Wash in uh -huh. The Wiz, right? And The Wiz and DC Cab. And so... Um, my gosh, these are like all my favorites. <laughs> so for a long time, mm -hmm. um, people thought I must be black in mm -hmm. Hollywood. right? And then they'd meet me and they'd say, where's Joel Schumacher? And I'd say, well, that doesn't really sound like an African-American name. Yeah, no, Schumacher. Like, like, no, no, I don't know. Unless you were owned by right. somebody a long time ago. Right. So... <laughs> <laughs> There's always someone who owns your ass. You yeah, know that. It yeah, doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah that's my daughter. You know, it's it's, it's um, like that great thing that Ice uh, Ice T said on that interview, the the pimps up hose down that Chris Rock showed me yeah, yeah. that documentary, and he says, "Look, and you know when I'm working." They're hoeing me out because they're pimping and they're hoeing me out. And then when I do this, I'm pimping. And I'm, he said, in one way or another, we all pimps. We're all, and pimp, hoes, we're all pimps and hoes. But man. we got to be good ones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> good pimps and hoes. The, the, the black, the African American experience, you were able to really like spotlight and identify it in such a way that the African American community felt like it was coming from an African American. You know, how was it that you were able to really, and at that time, that really sold. It was different. It was edgy. It was real and raw. How were you able to tune into that? Well, you know how every generation finds their music. And I don't know how we do find it, but um, there was a man in New York named Alan Freed, mm -hmm. and he had a show called Moondog, and it was on at midnight on Saturdays, I believe. And I was too young to be up that late, but I would sneak the radio under my covers and he was playing what used to be called race records down south. Uh -huh. And he was playing, you know, Ruth Brown and Nappy Brown and Fats Domino and Al Hibbler and the late, great Johnny Ace. And that was great. And he was also giving shows at the Brooklyn Paramount a couple times a year. And you would, you know, it's in the movie. You, you'd get there, you'd stand in line all night. 
Mm -hmm. had your little peanut butter and jelly sandwich, (laughs) went in at nine o'clock in the morning, and then Laverne Baker would run out, two tambourines on her hips, sing Tweedly Dee, and all day the place would rock. It rocked so much with the platters and, Mm -hmm. you know, all those great old groups. And it rocked so much they had to condemn the theater because the balcony was shaking. Because people were dancing and jumping so much that... (laughs) He's was going to be fall bouncing, apart. Yeah. So that was very much part of my, you know, like when you're 11, mm-hmm. 12. And so that music always spoke to me, maybe because my father was dead. We didn't have any money. My mother's out of work all the time. Um, and You had the blues. Yeah. <laughs> I, and, you know, felt like an outsider because mm-hmm. everybody else had families and their mom was at home. Mm-hmm. And, and that and you know as i say you find your music